how to mount a rifle scope. Now I know this seems like a no-brainer for many people, but we're going to run through it anyway because it's such an important topic. Even if you have the best rifle in the world and the best scope in the world, if those two systems aren't connected together in a solid way, you're going to have problems. Or if something's not mounted in a way that aligns them correctly, you're going to have problems. Remember, a rifle system is only as strong as its weakest point. For the purposes of today's demonstration, we have a Ticker T3 with a Picatinny rail. We're going to be mounting on it a Element Helix 6-24x50 second focal plane rifle scope. And you're going to need some tools for this. I'm not going to give you specific tools because it will depend on which rings or which mount you're going to use. But you will need a set of bubble levels um, for both the, the rail and the, the actual scope itself. You're going to need the mounts, either a two-piece or one-piece mount. It depends on what kind of setup you have. And then the necessary tools for tightening that mount to your rifle. Safety first though, make sure your bolt is open and your chamber is clear and we're good to go. Obviously, you're going to need to select a pair of rings or a one-piece mount to attach the rifle scope to your, your rifle. You can either attach those rings directly to the action of your rifle if you want to do that. I personally like to put a, a base on first, a Picatinny or Weaver base, because it gives me freedom to move those rings where I want them and space them out according to the dimensions of the rifle scope I'm using. When selecting a base, you have the option of choosing a tilted base with let's say 20 or 30 MOA of tilt built into it. This particular base has 20 MOA of tilt into it and you can also choose a, a tilted one piece mount if you want. I would highly suggest doing this if you're gonna be using an air gun, simply because at the distances that you zero an air gun at, 25 to 50 meters or yards, when you zero that rifle, the scope is not gonna be anywhere near its optical center anymore. And it's important that the scope is as close to its optical center as possible, because if you don't have a top tier scope, like for example, the Helix and Titan are not at the same level optically as the, the Nexus is, um, you're gonna find that as you start going really far away from your optical center, you start to lose clarity. That's just the way it is but you can maintain optical clarity with the use of a tilted base or adjustable rings. This will also give you significantly more elevation travel, so if you plan to shoot at long range, this is a good option regardless of whether you have a top tier scope or not. One thing you should never ever do is to shim your rings. It can damage the body tube of your scope, the surfaces aren't squared up, and if you're applying force by tightening the rings down onto, onto a shimmed setup, you can really, really damage your scope and you also won't have even contact or square contact with the surface of your body tube of the scope. It's just an all round bad idea. Instead of doing this, I would suggest using something like adjustable rings if you have an air gun. If you have a heavy recoiling rifle, I would not suggest using adjustable rings because it's just one more thing that can come loose. But there are many, many options there for canted or, or tilted rather uh, bases and, and mounts which will give you the desired effect without the need for shims. It's also very important that you select rings that are the right height. You're going to want to make sure that the objective lens of your scope can clear the barrel. You're going to want to make sure that your bolt handle doesn't make contact with your, your scope. And it's also important that you select the right diameter. So for example, the Helix is a 30 millimeter main tube, so I'm going to select 30 millimeter rings. When fitting your rings to the base, you're going to want to make sure that they are more or less over the bridges of your base. That'll give them the most solid point of contact. And what I would do before you tighten anything down is I would hold the rifle scope above the base. Make sure it's more or less where you want it. Make sure that your rings aren't too close together and make sure that you can put them at a good space. So I'm going to keep this ring over there and I'm going to keep the back ring a little bit further back. And with that, I can go ahead and finger tighten them down. When you do tighten them, you want to make sure that they are forward in the lugs. So finger tighten it down, but before it's too tight, push them forward until you feel the contact and then get them down like that. They don't need to be torqued down properly at this point. You don't want them moving, but you don't want to tighten them down yet properly. You can now go ahead and remove the, the tops of your rings. Make sure you put them somewhere safe where you, where you can't lose the, the hex screws. And then you can go ahead and, and fit the rifle scope on top. Make sure that everything is uh, spread out nicely. And then you can actually tighten down your, the top of your rings again 
but very, very loosely. You wanna make sure that you apply even pressure on both sides so that the, the tops of the rings aren't sitting skew in your, in your mount. And you want to be able to tighten it just until you start to feel resistance. You're gonna want your, your scope to be able to shift forward and backwards and turn side to side because we haven't set everything up for your eye relief yet or for the cant. We still have a lot of things to adjust. So right now these are just loose enough where I can shift the scope forward or backwards. You don't want it so tight that it starts to scratch the anodizing in your scope. You just want it to be able to move forward and backwards in a way that if you let go, it's not gonna shift position. The next step is to check your eye relief and adjust for that. Very, very important step. There are many ways to do it. The way I like to do it is to actually close my eyes, get behind the rifle in the position that feels most comfortable to me with my, my cheek on the, on the cheek piece and everything, and then open my eyes. You're then gonna wanna move your scope forward and backwards until you get the best sight picture possible. In this case, I'm, I'm pretty much spot on now. And you're gonna to want to do this at the maximum magnification because your eye relief will actually shift a little bit at, at lower magnifications as well. And you're most likely to have issues at maximum magnification where it's less forgiving. Remember also that the way that you hold your rifle in different positions might affect your eye's distance from the scope. So for example, if I'm lying prone, I might be close to the scope. If I'm sitting down, I might be a little bit further away. So take that into account and set your scope up for the way that you wanna shoot. If you have a heavy recoiling rifle, make sure it's not too close to your eye. You know it can happen. Ring around your eye. It happens to everyone, don't worry. <laughs> if you're happy with the position of your scope and your rings at this point, before we start adjusting the cant, you can actually start talking down the rings themselves to the base. Um, different rings and different mounts have different torque specifications. I don't exactly know the torque specifications for, for these rings, so I'm just going to play it by ear, but intuition is, is needed here. You don't want to tighten it down to the point where something breaks or snaps or gets damaged, but you don't want it loose enough that it starts to shift around as well. So I would suggest if you can, checking the torque specifications and adjusting to the torque. If you don't, just do somewhere in between where it's tight enough, but not too tight to damage it. That feels good. I'm gonna do the same at the back. There you go. You'll want to make sure that your setup is free from any side to side cant. This is especially important if you're gonna be shooting at extended ranges and you're gonna need some, some tooling for this because your eye is not gonna be perfect. I like to use two sets of bubble levels, one that attaches to the, the Picatinny rail or, or to your rifle in some way and that can, that can tell you whether your rifle is, is straight and the other that can go on top of your your scope and tell you that your scope is straight. What I'm gonna do on my turret here is just to take the top part off to give me a flat surface. I'm gonna put my level down and I'm gonna adjust it until everything is squared up. And there you go, bubble level on the top is centered, bubble level on my rifle is centered, so I know my scope is good. There are other ways to do the same thing. Some people put a plumb line down range and then make sure that the vertical crosshair lines up perfectly with the plumb line. The most important thing is that if you had to extend a pretend line down from your vertical crosshair, it should bisect the bore of your rifle perfectly. So one thing I look for is I bring my head back a bit, I look at the vertical crosshair, I look at where my bolt is, and you wanna make sure that that vertical crosshair would bisect where your bolt is perfectly. The reason for this is that you can imagine that gravity always pushes your bullet downwards. So if gravity pushes your bullet downwards, you want that bullet to perfectly follow your vertical crosshair all the way down. Otherwise, you're gonna have issues downrange where your point of impact is left or right. And that's why we set everything for cant. One thing that can happen is if you use rings that aren't built properly or aren't built to spec, the rings could actually be offset from your mount and that would mean that even if your levels are telling you that your scope is perfectly level with your bore, there could actually be offset from each other and this is gonna create problems in itself. So that's why you need to look for some good quality rings or a good quality mount and a good quality base. We almost finished. The last step is the step that I hate the most. You're gonna to have to talk down the tops of your rings, but if you do this in an uneven manner, then your scope could actually 
lose its, its cant again and you're gonna have to reset it all over again. So my rule of thumb is I only like to turn no more than a quarter of a turn at a time and do this in a crisscross pattern so that uh, you're always pushing down on one side the same as you're pushing on the other side. This way, if your scope does tilt slightly to the one side, as you talk down the other side, it'll talk back and there's a good chance that you're not gonna have any issues there. If you really wanna make sure that these don't come loose, you can use a little bit of Loctite. I don't think that's necessary for a little caliber like the 22 to 50, but specifically for heavy recoiling rifles where things can come loose, a little bit of Loctite does no harm. You don't wanna overdo this either. Again, discretion is, is helpful. If you do have torque specs, again, you can use the torque specs, but as long as everything is tight enough that your scope cannot physically move, then you should be good. And the last thing to do now is to simply confirm that when you've tightened down, nothing has shifted to one side or the other. So I'm gonna put my level back on and it's perfectly centered, we're all good. Well, that's the end of today's video on mounting. Of course, you'll need to zero the scope after that, but we'll leave that to a completely separate video. It's a whole topic in itself. If you wanna learn more, you can subscribe to our channel down below, or you can follow us on, on, on social media, Instagram and Facebook, or you can ask us questions directly through email or through social media, send us a personal message. Thanks for watching, we'll see you guys next time.